who were kidnapped and brought to America. Our forefathers weren't the pilgrims. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. Islam had arrived in America long before the racial turmoil of the 1950s and 60s. Millions of black slaves forcibly shipped to North America in the 18th and 19th centuries came from the largely Islamic nations of West Africa. Once they reached America's shores, they were stripped of their identities, heritage, and even their religion. I have to accept that we were completely cut off from our cult past culture, and that includes Islam. In 1930, Wali Farad, also known as Wallace Fard, created his own form of Islam in the poorer neighborhoods of Detroit. He claimed to be a prophet sent to help black Americans rediscover their heritage as both Africans and Muslims, and thus founded the Nation of Islam. Uh, they were the discontents, and Farah knew that. He knew that if he could reach them with his message, many of them would accept it for a new mind and a new way of perceiving themselves and the real world. Elijah Poole the son of a Baptist minister, was one of Fard's earliest acolytes. When he came to Detroit, uh, within a few years, a uh, hard time during the Depression, he met uh, Mr. Farrar. He made such an impression on my father that he had my father as a willing and obedient servant till death. 
Poole changed his name to Elijah Muhammad and became the chief minister of the Nation of Islam. In 1934, he took over the organization and over the next three decades, gradually transformed it into a powerful political force. Yes, sir. But I represent to you God in person. Yes, One new member was Malcolm Little, whose part Egyptian mother had exposed him to Orthodox Islam in childhood. While an inmate at Norfolk State Prison in Massachusetts, Little became aware of Elijah Muhammad's movement. He was doing, I think, 11 or 14 year sentence when he heard my father. After joining the Nation of Islam in 1948, Malcolm Little adopted the last name of X as a rejection of what he termed his slave name. No, what was your name? And why don't you now know what your name was then? Where did it go? Where did you lose it? Who took it? And how did he take it? After his release from prison in 1952, Malcolm X became the national spokesperson for the Nation of Islam, increasing membership and spreading Elijah Muhammad's word. But the ideology of the Nation of Islam cast the white man as the devil, a view not shared by Orthodox Islam, or even Malcolm X. Wrestling with his private beliefs and public role, Malcolm X was seen as a threat to the organization. In 1964, he was expelled. Not long after, he set off on what became his pivotal pilgrimage to Mecca. It was on the pilgrimage to, to Mecca that his eyes were really open. He looked around and he said, my goodness, you know, there are people with blonde hair and blue eyes and people with very dark skin. And, and he saw that Islam was a religion of people of all races and all nationalities. And that really sort of gave the lie to some of what he was being taught by Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm X returned from Mecca, preaching an enlightened view of Islam, what many today call traditional or global Islam. His charisma and his power as a personality was so great that all eyes were on him and he came to the truth of the separation between the Nation of Islam and Global Islam. And he did it in the public, he did it on stage, he did it on camera. But this philosophical stance displeased more conservative members of the Nation of Islam. In 1965, as he spoke before a meeting of the Organization for Afro-American Unity, Malcolm X was gunned down.